Don, this health care thing's just a big ripoff. So says former Fortress health care president and current Syracuse University economist Carl Strand, who's been busy crunching some numbers. And, Professor, you, you found some interesting things out. Uh, enlighten us. Uh, I have, Neil. Um, once upon a time, I was president of an insurance company. And when I began to hear uh, and read reports about the uh, premiums that youngsters were being charged, kids just out of college, the 18 to uh, 26 uh, uh, cohort, the folks who are going to be provided voluntarily under the parental coverage, I began to think about these numbers in terms of the true cost as I understood them. And the remarkable thing, Neil, is that this is the healthiest population, the lowest users of health care. And uh, when you begin to see stories that people's premiums for this group are up 200 percent, I began to think, holy smokes. This is a real ripoff, and the data that I began to compile show us a tremendous intergenerational transfer from young kids up to older beneficiaries, the people who are compulsory covered. So, in fact, I did use the word ripoff because I think it's irrational, it's an unjust and unfair way to charge uh, youngsters, whether they're under their parents' plans or uh, have to buy it themselves or else be fined at these rates. Well, currently, is it higher than would be the rates they pay uh, in the prior system, or are young people in general just looking at this and saying, we don't care what it was, we know what it is, and this is obscene, and we'll pay the penalty, and then and, and whatever, suffer the consequences? Well, the rational thing here would be for, for kids to pay the $95 a year and just not take coverage. I think youngsters are actually pretty rational, and I think the numbers are probably, I'm going to bet you uh, a buck here, the numbers are going to tell us that youngsters are not buying, and they're taking route instead because they're not irrational they see first of all there's a whole slew of mandates that they're never going to use second they actually know they never use the doctor they're extremely healthy and third they understand that these rates it really dents uh, their income and this by the way is a group of kids who don't have jobs by and large because of the general economic conditions and further they're already dealing with because I'm teaching in a university they're dealing with things that you and I never dealt with at this age they're not sure they're getting a job they're not sure when they can start you know to get married they're not sure when they can buy their first house and they're not sure when they can start family competition do you get a sense a professor that when when they've looked at this and the fact that it's a kind of a one-size-fits-all type program that um, they're just rolling the dice uh, and that th these penalties or what have you that are supposed to go up in future years to sort of force them into these type of plans are, are not are not cutting are, are not making a difference well they shouldn't again kids are smarter than I think the government gives them credit for and look at the system Neil I choose to rationally not buy care suddenly I'm in a car accident or oddly uh, or un uh, you know statistically the improbable happens and I get a, a horrible case of some disease well, under the current system, I just go buy insurance. So there's no risk uh, of You can buy it at that moment. In other words, you can get it right then. Time. There's no penalty. Yeah. For, yeah. You could be midstream yeah. through a so-called pre-existing condition and, and go ahead and get it. Yeah, this is like fire insurance. Oh, my house caught on fire. I'll go out and buy fire insurance right now. Yeah, that's a very good analogy. Uh, yeah. Professor, thank you very, very much. My pleasure. Meanwhile, what have I told you there is a guaranteed fail-safe...